Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, of course, you know what this is. This is the Ramble. You know who I am. I'm Alex Bennett, and we'll be here until midnight. Ladies and gentlemen, his name is Larry Bubbles Brown. We've gone through why he's named Bubbles. We never came up with why he's named Brown, but we'll get into that (laughs) some other time. That, that's your real name, by the way, Larry Brown, right? That's not like yeah, a show. Yeah, that is the most common name in the, uh, the, the basketball coach. Oh, boy, we just lost him. Hmm. Hmm. This happens with Skype occasionally. Well, we'll call him back. No, Larry is unavailable, it says. Okay, we'll try him again. He probably hasn't hung up yet. No, Larry is unavailable. Well, we'll just wait a couple of seconds here because uh, he he probably is still talking and doesn't realize that we've been hung up on. Hold on a second. Here we go. There we go. We got cut off. I know we got cut off. And you probably kept talking, right? Uh, for a while, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I know because I kept trying you over and over and over again. But anyway, you were saying that Brown is the most common name where? Larry Brown's a very common name. There's a foot, there was a football player, a basketball coach, a writer, and there's like there's eight actors in SAG named Larry Brown. And well, wait a minute. Then can they, are you in SAG? I am, yeah. Okay, so you're in SAG. Your name is Larry Brown. Supposedly nobody else can use that name. And I get a, I get a uh, I get a residual check for a Larry Brown that I always have to return because I'm honest. Oh really? Yeah. You see, I mean, for instance, I was led to believe that I have the name Alex Bennett, but nobody else can use that in AFTRA. Yeah, and that was supposedly made because they didn't want to mix up residual checks. But anyhow, you're, I notice. Uh, they just a few movies that I've been in. They've used Larry Brown on there. So, um, yeah, I, I was led to because there was an actor named John Carson, and he had to go by John David Carson because Johnny Carson, I guess, had been in AFT or SAG. Either that or Johnny Carson had to change his name from John Carson. You know? Right. But there were a lot of people who had to change their names. Uh, the one I remember the most, I remember an actor named Stuart Granger. Mm-hmm. Know what Old his, English actor. Know what his real name was? Jimmy Stewart. Wow. And he couldn't use it. So he changed it to Stuart Granger. Well, he really changed it. <laughs> well, you know. My real name is uh, is Tom Cruise, so I, I'm, but I can't <laughs> use it, unfortunately. No, nobody will ever use my real name. Bennett Schwarzman. That's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, you're the only Bennett Schwarzman I've ever known. Yeah. Well, I was going to, you know, I, I, at one point, I went, what, what are you going to use? What you did, there was a ritual. You adopted a show business name, you know, and that was going to be your name forever. And initially, I, I never would, would go with Bennett Schwarzman. That was too unwieldy. Um, and so I, I never, I never used it, uh, but I, I did use Jerry Bennett in the very beginning, uh, and because I was a fan of Jerry Lewis at the time, a big mistake on my part. <laughs> we didn't know. <laughs> we didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I named myself Jerry Bennett. And then when I went into the Navy, I had to use Bennett Schwarzman, you know, uh, because when I went on the air, you had to use what your real name was, you know. This is Navy Seaman Bennett Schwarzman. And then, after that, I went to Houston, Texas, 
And uh, I, I decided that I had to change my name because I didn't like the Jerry Bennett. I like the Bennett part because my name is Bennett Schwarzman, right? Uh, and my father had just died. And I felt, you know, to honor him, I think I'll just take his first name. His first name was Alexander, and he used Alex Bennett a lot, you know. So that was that yeah. was that, that was how it how it uh, turned out, you know. Uh, and and uh, to this day, I am I am Alex Bennett, but I still, you know, I still do all my business under Bennett Schwarzman. Although I did not know that. although I can accept checks, okay, under the name Alex Bennett. Uh, I'm getting a uh, I'm getting a uh, inheritance of a considerable amount of money, and the name that it was in the on the will was Alex Bennett. Well, what do I do? Well, you can send me a check as Alex Bennett, and I just simply will endorse it, Alex Bennett, and then sign it and endorse it as Bennett Schwarzman, and then it's there's no problem. And why is there no problem? Because I'm not doing it for any reason to defraud somebody. So that's how I solve it. Uh, so how long does it take for an inheritance to go through probate? This is, uh, I was talking to somebody the other night. I said it can be <laughs> months or I mean, No, no, year. this is, this will be, I think, they figure it's going to be okay about uh, maybe December, you know. Um, It'll be. But. You know, I just wish I had it now because I'd like to pay a lawyer to do, be a little more aggressive than he is. But you know, but it, you know, it, 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 I, I, I've had, I get checks all the time under Alex Bennett, and I just endorse it, Alex Bennett. So Alex Bennett endorsed it, all right, and then I endorse it because it's was endorsed over to me, and then I put it in the bank. So. You know, but you don't. You don't really like that to happen all the time. You know, because no. it gets to be a pain in the ass. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because so, uh, you take it to the bank, they're they're, they're probably immediately going to think, "Oh, this guy's trying to pull fraud." Yeah. Well, I'm not trying to pull a fraud, but you know, when you walk in with the kind of money that'll be in this on this check, it's uh, you know they have to do a little bit of checking. You know. But anyway, so so it's uh, you know that that's how I what I do with my name. So you say you've been working a lot lately. Too much, yes. What do you mean? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Too much? Is it too? When you're a comedian, is there such a thing as too much? It just I had to do a little traveling, which I don't like. So it's exhausting. And where'd you have to go? I went to the Valley, and then uh, last week I played a great room, Harris Tahoe, up at uh, Lake Tahoe. So. Yeah, were you were you opening or headlining? I I was in the, I was uh, opening for Felipe, but I was he actually has an opener. I was kind of like in the middle. So oh, so he brought you up anyway. He brought me up, yes. Oh, that's nice. It's very yeah, nice. Was, that's a great room because that uh, the green room was just pictures of Sinatra and Rickles. So I saw Rickles on that stage years ago. So this is Harris in in Tahoe. South South Lake Tahoe, yeah. I built. Uh, uh, what was the big room there? I think it was called. I think it was the green room, but I can't remember exactly. The big room there at Harris is called. It's actually called Sammy's room for Sammy Davis. Oh, really? But prior to yeah. that, it was, it was Sammy's showroom. But there was some. It was called something else before that. Yeah, it was that was I think in the seventies they changed it to Sammy's showroom. Because I remember Slayton was playing up there, and we went up because Slayton was getting married up there. And uh, he got married in a sleigh out in the field in the middle of winter. I remember hearing about that. Yeah, yeah. It, we were freezing our ass off. <laughs> I took a picture. Of, I, I don't have it anymore, but I took a picture of all these people sitting in the sled, all just you know covered with the with blankets and things like that. And I I titled the picture the the uh, what was it the the Donner wedding party. The Donner. <laughs> Donner wedding party, yeah. Uh, it was it was pretty cold. In fact, it was so cold that my mustache froze from just the steam coming out of my, my mouth. You know, and uh, he, he must have got married on Valentine's Day or something. <laughs> it, it was it was it was the middle of winter. 
It was like, I mean, it was December, maybe, I can't remember. But anyway, so we went up there, and he did his little show, and I think Robin Williams showed up. Oh, wow. Uh, and he brought Walter Matthau with him, because they were making that movie together. He was making that movie with Walter Matthau. And uh, I had never, I would never, you know, this, this Robin I've seen, right? You know, Robin I knew, but bringing... Walter Matthau, my God, that was terrific. Matthau, but I don't know great. what they—I don't know what they called the room then. I'm trying to remember. Huh. I do remember Cal Neva in the State Line room, in which the uh, the State Line went right through the center of the dance floor. And uh, there's actually a line in the swimming pool. And there's a line in that. the swimming pool, and then it continues into the State Line room. So. It was Partial owner, partially owned by Frank Sinatra until they kicked him out. It wasn't partially. I think it was fully owned by Frank Sinatra until they kicked well, him they, out. Yeah, well, they made him. Uh, <laughs> I guess because well, of his alleged connection. Well, what happened? No, what happened was Sam Giancana, who was a big Chicago gangster, came to stay at Cal Neva, and it's against the law in the state of Nevada to have a known gangster stay at your hotel. And so he he lost the hotel. He lost Cal Neva, you know. But up until that time, I think Sinatra owned, if he didn't own all of it, he owned a majority. You know. And it was a great Gian, place, too, you know. Giancana had that hot girlfriend, I think, that did Kennedy. Uh, um, 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 what was his name? Um, oh, God. Judith Campbell Exner. Exner. Very good. Thank you. Why you were having trouble remembering it? If you're having trouble remembering it, I don't feel <laughs> yeah. bad. She, I remember. I just thought of the picture. I saw her in the '60s. She looked like she was really hot. Well, <laughs> well you want to talk about a security risk? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a- I mean, for, forget Trump and his uh, his uh, documents. You know, uh, I mean, here is Kennedy having sex with this woman. Judith Campbell Exner, and she at the same time is having sex with Sam Giancana, the biggest gangster in Chicago. And there, you know, there's pillow talk going on. And uh, it, they, they, they really, I think it, it, it caused a real problem. You know. Yeah. Much as I like JFK, that he was uh, so, that was so reckless. Well, he he couldn't keep his you know in his pants. Here, here's a story I heard. I heard from somebody who had sex with him. Her name was Blaze Starr. Do you remember that name? I heard that name. She, she yeah. was a stripper in uh, in New Orleans, and she was a fairly famous stripper. And um, the governor, I'm trying to remember his name now. He was the son of. A, uh, oh, he was the son of the former. Governor, who was, uh, they made the movie "All the King's Men" about him. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember the governor's name, and I can't remember it exactly. But anyway, he brought Blaze Star to the White House to meet with Kennedy, kind of, I guess, to impress her and whatever, but also to impress Kennedy because he brought her to have sex with Kennedy. And she told me the story that they went into the closet because he had to have sex standing up because he had a bad back. Jesus. And she had to do it standing up. So that was the story I heard. <laughs> he was a stand-up wow. guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess they got the... the they must have got those genes from uh, the old man. I guess didn't didn't he screw everything? Up? Well, he he had a long time affair with Gloria Swanson, the father. Right. And in fact, he financed her movies, a lot of her movies. Um, so he he got into movies by financing her pictures, and um, he he financed one picture of hers that never even got released, and it was very expensive. It was directed by Eric von Stroheim. But he kept going over budget. And so finally, she closed down the whole production. She said, I can't do this. And it was Kennedy money. Um, and um, in fact, 
Scenes from Queen Kelly wound up being used in Sunset Boulevard. You know, where she's looking at the screen yeah, and yeah. seeing her movies and saying, I used to, you know, you know, I used to be great and whatever. Um, that's the movie Queen Kelly they're showing, which was directed by Strawheim, who plays her butler in Sunset Boulevard. And they they hated each other after that incident because he kept going over budget and he was a tyrant and she uh, she hated him. And then come Sunset Boulevard, they're co-stars. It's it's an amazing story. It's an amazing wow. story. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I mean, uh, uh, Kennedy was the daddy. Daddy Kennedy was doing his stuff too, you know. But I think the attitude among the, the, the women in their lives, and like Kennedy's mother, was, hey, as long as he comes home, you know, as long as I'm his wife, as long We're as I... We're rich, we'll look the other way, so... Yeah, as long as I get the advantages, um, let him go out and screw around, I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. And they never did. You mm-hmm. know? So, that was this, that that was that story. Huey Long was the guy you're trying to think. Huey Long. And I'm thinking about what was the son's name? Uh, Russell Long. I I don't think it was Russell. It was something else. There's a bunch of Longs in Louisiana. Yeah, but he was the governor. And uh, he he brought, uh, you know, the stripper to the White House. uh, Huey Long was going to run for president. In fact, they made a movie about that guy. All the King's Men. No, No, they made a movie about Huey Long. They made a movie about his son and Belle Star. Oh, they did? Wow. Belle Star, that was her name? Yeah, Belle Star. And Blaze Star. Blaze Star. And it's a movie called Blaze, and it starred as the governor, Paul Newman. Well, I never heard of that one. Yeah, yeah. And it's all about his relationship with the stripper. You know, so. <laughs> Uh, they didn't include in the picture him going to the White House and pimping her out, you know. <laughs> Standing up in the closet. <laughs> she said she did the, the, she had sex with Kennedy standing up in a closet. Uh, and and uh, the answer was he couldn't he couldn't do it lying down because of his bad back, you know. So. And supposedly LBJ uh, did more women than JFK. Uh. Really, I didn't know that. LBJ called uh, Kennedy a rank amateur, and he was banging. He had a, they put a warning device in, uh, in case Lady Bird came in, because they never knew when he'd be screwing someone in the Oval Office. I imagine you could, I, I mean, that's what I would do. If I became president, I would say the first thing I'm going to do is have sex on the Resolute desk. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm going to, uh, because why not, you know? Just, if you're a powerful man, you gotta act like one. And what better to do than to have sex in the uh, in the <laughs> Oval <laughs> Office? You know, I I don't blame uh, uh, what's his name at all. Although he never really had sex with Monica Lewinsky, he just had a blowjob from Monica Lewinsky, mm-hmm. which he didn't consider sex. Which I have to explain to a lot of women. That, um, well, for instance, I'll ask you, is a blowjob sex? I would consider it so. You would? Really? Yes. Because here, here's the difference. When, uh, uh, I don't consider it to be sex. I don't consider that I've literally had sex with a woman until I penetrate her. Yeah, some people believe that, and you might be right. Anything else is what is referred to as foreplay. Mm-hmm. All right? So women will say to me, now it's sex. I say, okay. Now tell me, how many times in your life have you had sex? And they go, well, five, 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 five times. How many different people have you had sex with? Five people. And then I go, huh, were they all penetrative? 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 <laughs> Did they penetrative. Pen- penetrative. <laughs> Were they penetrative? And they they go, yes. I go, what about blowjobs? Well, that's a different thing. 
and women even count blowjobs as not being sex. You know, did you have sex with him? No, I gave him a blowjob. So, I I felt that uh, when uh, our former president Clinton got up and said, "I did not have sex with that woman, Monica Lewinsky," uh, that's true. He never had penetrative sex with her. He just had got the constant, endless BJ's. <laughs> you know, so, and everybody gives him a bad time. How can we, how can he say he didn't have sex with her? Well, what do you consider sex? Describe, it, it, I see, I think of a BJ as foreplay. Okay. Okay. Um, of course, in the case of Kennedy, it was the full, whole thing, you know, with her. And I think what he did, I think he just got BJ's because he didn't want to cheat on Hillary. And he didn't consider that cheating. So everybody, you can go out and have a discussion tonight on this point about what constitutes uh, having sex. Right. You know, are BJ's having sex? No. I think they're, I think they're foreplay. But, you know. Mainly because I think, as a as myself, I was never happy unless I had penetrative sex. I didn't feel it was complete. It wasn't complete. Yeah, you could see that. Yeah. Yeah. So th that's why I feel the way I do. But you could feel the way you want to. Well, I think uh, you got to think about. Uh, I wonder how many. The, most of the presidents probably did fool around like that. Well, uh, I there. I, one time I. FDR, right? FDR, well, he had a mistress. He died with his mistress. Right. Um, the, um, the the fact is that a lot of people, um, um, what, what was the thought I was going for here? My mind's kind of going wonky on me right now. Uh, but, I mean, you know, it, it, they, they, oh, yeah, men with power. I interviewed a, a psychiatrist once. A Dr. Banish Hoffman, I remember his name. And uh, he was doing a speech about, uh, I was in Washington, D.C., and he was giving a speech about uh, people in power who have sex. And they, he said to me, when I was talking to him, the most requested sexual preference for men in power is S&M bondage things like that and the reason is because these are people who are in and this doesn't he says this isn't just people who are you know in politics this is also people who run major corporations and are the CEO of a corporation because all day long they're wielding power and when they have sex they don't want to have that power they want somebody else to have that power and so, there, so therefore, the most requested uh, predilection when it came to prostitutes in Washington, D.C., among lawmakers, was S&M. Wow. Yeah. So now you know something that most people don't know. <laughs> now you know why our country is so yeah, Well, it explains <laughs> things, doesn't it? Yeah. You know. I would like to see Trump with a ball gag in his mouth. Jesus. You know, <laughs> It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But um, it's strange, you know. So, um, are, are, do, you have any, do you have a girlfriend these days at all, Bubs? I no. never ask you that. No. No, no. Not, not looking. Why are you not looking? Those are, I don't want one. You don't want one? Oh, okay. No, and the, uh, the, you know, your age of sex driver is pretty dead anyway. So well, forget which, about, yeah, but you like company. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time with anyone. So. Well, that's your antisocial nature. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you probably wouldn't even want to spend time with me. <laughs> yeah. I can only do an hour. <laughs> you can only do I'm at my hour. limit. <laughs> that's your limit. Well, you know, we've come up on that hour. Uh, we've yeah. got about a minute limit. But we've, we've learned a lot about powerful men. <laughs> yeah, we, have a, we have a minute left. Uh, so, uh, are, are you enjoying at least your faster non-dial-up that you can do?
do things a lot faster and get your email faster. And yeah, much easier to get things. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. You'll find in a couple of months you'll say, "How did I ever live without this?" Mm-hmm. You know, and you did, but you had to hear for all those years. You had to hear that horrible dial-up tone. That yeah. 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 But now you're in the modern age, bubs. Yeah. And you can't even I, figure I was, out. I was in the 90s. Now I'm up to 2010, I think. So. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, hey, it's always good talking with always you, Always good bubbles. to hear from you, my friend. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is a man who is known collectively as Larry Bubbles Brown. Bye-bye, Larry. Bye-bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And thank you very much, Larry Bubbles Brown. Always nice to have the Larry, the Bubs, uh, here on our little program as we finish off the week. Uh, boy, mm. had uh, had a birthday dinner tonight for Marjorie. Took her out to a, a restaurant. I hadn't, haven't gone out to a restaurant in a year. And um, I... I I think last year when we did this, it was about 50 bucks less, and we ate exactly the same thing we always eat. But, it, you know, things have really gone up. The prices on, on goods have jumped. And I think it's basically, well, we can talk about this. It, I think it's basically that uh, we as consumers are being taken advantage of by those who are the providers. But anyway... Let's uh, go to our panel here uh, tonight. Wait a minute, I just, uh, I just, okay, there we go. Here they come. Let me see here. We got, uh, we got Josh is here, and um, um, I guess Jeff, Jeff is here, but he's not uh, pushing his button, but there is Josh. Hello, Josh, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah. What, what's, what's new on your, in your part of the world? Well, not a whole lot new. Just, just busy work, busy day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Other than that, yeah. nothing particularly new. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. How about you, Jeff? Anything? Or did he, he, he? You can hear me, Jeff, oh. right? Can you hear me? Here we go again. Uh, I love the trouble. Uh, yeah, I love uh, Jeff. Can you hear me? Yes, I, I can. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I've got a little problem there. What's your problem? No, just visually. What's, uh, what's dark? What's wrong visually? I think I. Yes, I can. Okay, I, I was wondering what you might be seeing, uh, uh, you know. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, well, I... Uh, yes, I can. You can what? <laughs> what? Uh, my colors are dark. Well, I can't do anything about that. So, oh well, you know, well, it, were they going to figure it out? My colors. I can't remember who said it. It, 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 it. I will be back. You'll be back. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, Josh, anything in the news that's been uh, floating your boat? Um. Well, I've been listening in and out, you know, as I drive to and from. It's uh. I've been a continuation of uh, many of the same stories. I, you know, I, I think the Republicans have really made a mistake with the uh, speaker they've chosen, and they're going to, you know, they're going to walk this radical path, it looks like. I mean, this aid package for the Israelis, mm-hmm. um, whether or not you agree with the Israelis' actions or not, I guess set aside, but the aid package for them you know, was one that they demanded they were only going to do it for his, the Israelis and then it had to be paid for, you know, which is relatively bizarre. 
Uh, nothing for the Ukrainians. Nothing for border security, which I thought five minutes ago they were in love with. Um, Etc. You know, it's just this thing for is the Israelis and in order to pay for it, we're going to slash the IRS budget. Um, you know, I don't well, understand. They've been, they've been I mean, wanting. They've been understand why they're doing it because they're you know. But they've been wanting people, to get the IRS people. budget for quite a while now, haven't they? Well, they've been cutting it for many years. Yes. Which why, is what? What do they see as being the positive value of that? Well, they don't have nearly the staff they need to enforce tax laws. Um, you know, it's 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 possible to basically file your taxes and say whatever you want, right? And if they don't check you out, you get away with it. Well, what it. is it? Is it that they just don't want the uh, the uh, IRS to check people's money, or the especially rich Pretty people's much, money, yeah. money? Because the thing is that yeah, the only you know the only business that the United States has. I mean, the only thing that literally makes them the most money are taxes of one sort yeah. or another. Right. And when you cut IRS agents, then everybody can cheat. Well, you know? that's their plan, but what it does is it allows their ultra-rich folks to cheat. The people bankrolling their nonsense. Um, you know, to get away with it and keep a heck of a lot more of their money that they weren't really entitled to, if you ask me. And if you ask the law, yeah. uh, but if no one checks it, you know, and I mean, like I said, you can pretty much file whatever you want, right? If it doesn't get checked out. Now, I mean, I don't think it would be wise for a person like me to, you know, to do something egregious and say, oh, yeah, I said, yes, I made I made $12,000 last year and uh, I don't know anything. And you owe me. Buy. I mean, that's probably going to get flagged pretty easily. But when you talk about lots and lots of money and you shave a percent here and a percent there... And then, you know, you do stuff like Trump did for many years, and is probably still doing. That equals up millions of dollars in their pocket. Because the amount of money that we were talking about to begin with is very large. And that leaves them with no real way to check these folks out. I mean, who's going to, you know, it's Trump is his own thing. But there are lots of other people out there that file taxes on large incomes like that. And, who, I mean, who's checking it? I mean, no one really, right? I mean, who's saying, wow, this doesn't look a little bit right. I need to look into this. Yeah. We maybe need to do an audit. We need to get, look, look at the documents. You know, people always fight audits, so that takes manpower. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if they were yeah. really wanting to hire 80,000 people to work for them, mm -hmm. that's a serious amount of people. That should tell you how bad off they think that they were or are. Yeah. Or should it not? Yeah, it should. I mean, 80,000 people is twice as many people as the company that I currently work for employs in North America. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a lot. Of, and I work for a worldwide company. Right. So that's a lot of people. And also, aside from all that, it was designed to cure or go a very long way toward curing the very thing that regular folks like us have complained about for, I don't know, pretty much my entire life, which mm. was you call them and you can't get a damn person on the phone or anything like that because they don't have any people, you know? Well, for years, for years about taxes, I, what I've been yelling about is that the, and I correct me on this, but the great, de the great amount of money that is generated in money to the government from taxes is not generated by the pot bottom 90 percent of the taxpayers mm -hmm. yeah, am, am i right so. about that and, the, and it was said that if so. you did away with the taxes to that 90 percent mm -hmm. and just made the over 90 percent to pay and also the corporations and tighten up the corporations We'd have more than enough money to exist, Tom, without without actually taxing you and me. And in the beginning, yeah, I don't know if that's complete, but I think it's it's certainly on track to be in mostly the case, I believe, because I mean, a lot of people, you know, in my situation or similar or lower, you know, pay some taxes, and then typically make sure we pay enough, and then we often get some back. 
you mm-hmm. know, because we we like to have overpay, make sure we're not going to get hit with this big bill at the end of the year and all that, right? So they're making, you know, steady money off all those people. But, you know, obviously we're not paying mega money the way that people who are making mega, mega money should, or corporations. Um, and, you know, whether or not... See, and here's the thing is, whether or not corporations or super rich people should pay more taxes or less taxes is a political debate. And you are allowed to have your opinion when you believe on that. What the bill previously passed to hire IRS agents was for was not to decide whether or not you should pay more taxes or less taxes or any of those political questions. It was just to enforce the laws that are already on the books that have already been settled politically. You know, it was just to enforce existing law. And if later on any Congress wants to come along and do away with all those laws and do away with taxes or whatever else, that's a political. Let's question. go back to the. Be- so. Let's go to the be- back to the beginning of the individuals, you and me, being taxed. You know, there was a time when we were not taxed. Uh, correct. And, and and not not directly on income. Not directly on income, and uh, that that time happened when happened in the twenties. Mm-hmm. And why did they do it? Well, a lot of reasons. I mean, one, because it was becoming harder to raise tax money based on goods because there were some lean times and recessions. No, you know, no, no, then no. Then. There's also another, to pay that, for wars. There was another factor there that, that was a great generator of income to the government that suddenly disappeared. Well, that's what I'm saying. Taxes on goods. Well, the, what alcohol. goods? What alcohol? Because, alcohol, for example. Because we right? had prohibition. Yes, and when prohibition right. happened, they didn't have a way of paying the right. bills, so they came yeah. to us to get it. Right. You know, and yeah, I mean that's what I'm saying. When it transitioned from a goods based to a income based, because like you said, many of the goods were harder to tax because people. They, I think I saw you know, that buying. something like seventy five percent of the taxes the government got, tax money the government got, mm-hmm. came from alcohol. Uh, that might be right. I mean, I'm not the prohibition expert, but I know that. Well, I, I am kind of, of a prohibition expert. I mean, I've read whole books on it and everything. Yeah, I mean, and, yeah, and, the, and they indicated that there were two things that came out of prohibition and caused prohibition. And one was taxes, and mm-hmm. the other was women's rights. Well, right, yeah. I mean, yeah. it was tied together. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah. you know, basically. Mm-hmm. But I know that the alcohol consumption for as much as we think that we have it today, the consumption at that time oh, was incredible. More common yeah. amongst the general population than it is now. Oh, you go to a person's house, and outside yeah. they'd have a hard cider barrel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know. I mean, uh, the drinking among the population, and that doesn't mean everyone was drunk or all the time or anything like that, but many people, I mean, the vast majority had daily alcohol consumption. Yeah. Now, like you said, it doesn't mean they drank 50 beers every night, but, you know, well, I maintain, a lot of I maintain, people had that yeah. drink when they got home each night. Right? I maintain that as horrible an idea as, as the Prohibition was, the fact was that after Prohibition, Americans were drinking less, even when yeah, booze right. came I back, mean, even when booze yeah. came back. And the yeah. only reason was is they got used to living without it. Yeah, right. You a know? lot of people did, yeah. And, and maybe that was a good idea because the women, the room, women's rights movement was aligned with the prohibition movement mm-hmm. because yeah, women, women were bothered by the fact that their husbands would go out, yeah. get drunk, come home drunk, and beat the crap out of them. Yeah, I mean, they, would, they were, yeah. and these activities often went in conjunction with other activities like gambling and, you know, mm-hmm. uh, things like that. I mean, yeah, they were wasting the family money, right? I mean, yeah. Um, and being, you know, jerk offs in the process, yeah. you know, so yeah, it absolutely, you know, drove a lot of it, but all those factors combined for, you know, an amendment to tax income. Hey, you know, yeah. you know, I, I have, have somebody staying with me here and he mentioned to me something that was kind of interesting when we got into a discussion and this happens to deal with what's going on in Israel right now. 
He said, you know, in all the times that there have been all these conflagrations in the, in the Mideast uh, with these various and sundry people, uh, Ray, are you there? Is that Ray? It may not be Ray. Oh, it is Ray. Okay. Uh, the, the, the conflagration in the, in, in the Mideast, which is, you know, Israel, Hamas, and uh, forget Hamas, Israel and, and the Arab nations, all the problems that that has caused. What, what was the root cause of it? Whose original fault was it that they created this rather caustic situation? It was an organization called the United Nations. Who has been absolutely quiet in this whole thing is the United Nations. They haven't, you know, haven't said, hey, Israel, lighten up, you know, or Hamas, stop it, or Palestine, do something about it. They're not doing anything. And they're the people who were the root cause of this whole problem to begin with. Because in 1948, they said, oh, okay, uh, Israel belongs to the Jews. Or not to the Jews, but to the what became Israelis. You know, so I thought that was a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big believer in the United Nations, period. Um, I really never have been. I mean, I mean, they have some purpose, but uh, I often think, you know, whatever, it's elitist or whatever, but when America sets its foreign policy and the UN objects, I just, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I mean, I, sure, you know, we'll, maybe we won't renew your lease in that fancy building you got in New York or whatever, you know, who cares, you know. Yeah, but we could turn them into condos. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we we'll probably make make a lot of money off that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know. <laughs> so. But I mean, they they are the the uh, the root root cause of this situation, and they have not said a word. They have not they have not acted in this situation, and I think they have a responsibility. Yeah, I mean, I haven't heard a lot from them. Right. I mean, either way, you know, like you said, I guess. Uh, I mean, I'm not. I guess I'm not reading news constantly all day, so maybe yeah. there's been some things or whatever. But I, I mean, I haven't heard I haven't heard much either way. They seem to be confused about what they should do or what they want to do, or not, maybe they just don't care. I'm not sure, but they don't seem as helpful. Well, I think Biden this situation is they might some others. Biden Biden, um, uh, I think took a rather gutsy move in saying that, and he sent Blinken over to talk to Netanyahu about this, that the, uh, that the Israelis should hit pause and let humanitarian efforts take place before they decide to do anything else. And uh, that's, a, you know, it was pretty gutsy on his part, especially in election year. Yeah, I mean, it's a slight deviation from his stance but it's not you know completely unexpected and it still allows him to maintain uh his original position um so it's a bit of a hedge but a very minor one you know you yeah know, if you will. but it's better than you know when you when you turn on your tv set and you you, know, you see the statistics 3500 children dead in gaza just that's children alone about 10,000 people in all and the amount of, uh, and I, go the, I said this last night and the night before, the, the amount of uh, Hamas members that have been killed, and Netanyahu is, is bragging about this, is 12, is it 12? Yeah, 12 members I, I, of, of I Hamas. Um, and you begin to say, to, and he's going to up the number if he can, right? But you say, wait a minute, 10,000 people that dead, 12 members of Hamas killed? Isn't that a little disproportionate? Isn't I, mean, I, I have no idea where those numbers come well, from. Well, those I numbers, the, 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 12 is coming, the, 12. the 12 is coming from Net Netanyahu. The 10,000 is coming from not Hamas, but the Israelis. I mean, I don't know if he means 12 senior leaders or... I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying either way. I, I mean, I'm saying I don't know if... Yeah, but I mean, it's just, it's, it's a horrible, god-awful 
war over there. I mean, this thing is terrible. The, what the war U is good? Well, no, no war is ever good. But this right. is this is just devastation, you know. And I I I hate to see it going on. I you know <laughs> why people want to kill other people for plots of land or anything else has always mystified me. You know, I mean, it's not worth taking a life over. And and uh, why can't we just all talk to each other? Now, you know, I'm being I'm being very simplistic, and I'm being very I live in a la la land of a wonderful world, but can't I expect a wonderful world? We're capable of it. Sure. You know. I think that's reasonable. Yeah. So, I made my case. I see you later. Bye. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hello, Ray. Ray? Sorry, it's muted. Hi. Oh, oh hi. Hi, Ray. How Hello. You, how you doing? Turn your mic I'm down. I'm okay. Turn your mic down, will you? Oh, down. Yeah, your okay. mic is kind of overpowered. Is that better? No, more. more. How's that? No, now up. How's that? No, down. Oh, my God. Okay. Now it's good. I don't know why. it's. I put it on the auto thing. It's supposed to no. adjust the volume. Well, probably adjusts it upwards. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But by the way, Josh, when you call, sometimes you're looking at your, I guess it's an iPad or what is that you're looking That's at? That's my phone right now. Your I'm phone? just checking. Well, yeah. What do you check? I usually just check the news really quick or whatever. Uh, occasionally I'll get a text from somebody or work or something, but that yeah. was about it. Uh, you know, like my wife will text a few times if she's going to sleep or things like that. Yeah. How's everything going at your new job? Well, good, you know, not 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 bad. Not bad. Well, you know, working through changing some of the stuff in my department, but you know, that takes that's a struggle sometimes, but what to get people to accept it or to get the company to go yeah, along to, with it? Yeah, to get people to accept it. I mean, it's, you know, it was kind of a wreck when I got there, so you know, and they went without a manager for a long time, plus the site was without a couple of managers, so they went many months with really no one watching them at all, so they weren't managed. Oh, that can't be all. good. Well, that's what I'm saying. They got very used to things that just can't happen. Yeah. Um, and then the manager that they had prior, mm -hmm. you know, really let them do anything they wanted. Uh, <laughs> so, it, you know, it's it takes someone who's really never been managed and suddenly they have to be managed because they're in a leadership role themselves. I'm mm -hmm. talking supervisors. Uh, the floor employees, for the most part, are fine, you know. But you take supervisors and you try to hold them to a higher level. And they don't like the new guy you coming know, in. No, they don't like it. I mean, really, no one likes being managed. I mean, you know, we're told that they need to improve on things or what. I mean, everyone thinks they do the best job, you know, and all day, every day, and no one can do it better than me. Everyone thinks that about their job, probably. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, so it's, it's, uh, Good days and bad. Yeah. Anybody been, anybody been seeing the uh, Trump trial here in New York? I I haven't watched any of it, but I hear the talk about it, the analysis or whatever, on my way to work in the morning and things like that. They were showing some clips a little bit ago, but I had the television down. It was one of those kids out there flapping. I don't know what they were saying, but I'm sure it was interesting. I yeah. just watched the interviews when they come out. It's not televised, is it? No, no. Okay. My volume is okay now. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, on Wednesday night, I did happen to be working on something, and I turned the television on. I didn't even know this was going to happen before, but I did turn the television on Wednesday night to C-SPAN on the uh, Senate, and I did hear them arguing all night trying to get these military leaders confirmed, arguing with, you know, dipshit Tuberville. <laughs> he made sure to sit there the entire time and let them go through their spiel about each individual guy and then ask for a vote. And then they would ask for objection, and he would stand up and say, I object, so that they couldn't have a vote. And, you know... How can one person hold this up? Well, that's Senate rules. I mean, there are certain rules in the Senate that allow a particular senator to hold up certain pieces of you know particular legislations and these 
military promotions mm -hmm. that are Senate confirmable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not all military promotions are, but in these big leadership levels, and there's a couple hundred of them. The military is huge. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's got several branches. Um, are able to be held up by somebody, mm -hmm. and he's holding them up. You Jeez know? almighty. And, <sighs> you know, it's... Uh, it's getting to a, it's getting to a crisis. I mean, they they snuck through a couple mm -hmm. to tie some stuff over, but you know they, one of the temporary people in the Marine Corps that was doing two jobs because they haven't confirmed anybody had a heart attack, and is out of commission now, and and he was already doing two jobs. So the guy that was doing two jobs had a heart attack and almost died, mm. and you know it's got the Marine Corps in a crisis. So. People getting sick and tired of it, but they're obviously not sick and tired of but it enough. I, you to see, I, about it. you know what we have? We have a totally—I got to say this—we have a totally dysfunctional government right now. Totally dysfunctional. Right now, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I don't remember anything like this in my lifetime. I remember t roadblocks and things like that happening, but this is just total dysfunction. I mean, things that are, are not good for us. You know, like not funding the IRS. You don't want to fund Ukraine. You don't want to fund Israel. Well, someday you're going to have to, whether you like it or not. Either that or the bombs from the other country are going to be coming over to see you, okay? You you know, you've got to fund the Ukraine to stop Putin. You've got to fund Israel because they're our partners. Uh, but I think we, at the same time, have to say, hey, we don't like what you're doing here. We don't like what you're doing there. I mean, we. I think... We have the right to say to Israel, or even the U Ukraine, what they can do with that money and how they can use it. And, you know, you can't, you, we should not be a par partner to what might be considered by other people in other countries as genocide. Mm -hmm. Okay? And what we're doing when we pay, give Israel money for weapons and so on is we're a partner to genocide, and I don't think we want to be that. We're America. We're not those kind of people. You know? And we don't allow other people to do it in our names either. I mean, I don't think, uh, has Ukraine been doing any amount of genocide in, in their actions? It's basically a, on the part of Putin, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't believe that the Ukrainians have committed uh, anything that I remember hearing about. Um, yeah. You know, uh, I mean, I have some probably unpopular stances on some of that kind of stuff. I mean, I you know, I don't know. The Russians invaded Ukraine. As far as, I mean, I wouldn't take any prisoners, but that's just me. <laughs> what do you mean? Who, you wouldn't take, you mean if you were the Russians? I would do what the Finns did to the Russians in 1940. I would just, anywhere I could find one, I would just eliminate it. <laughs> yeah, but that's defense. That's purely defense. Well, they didn't take any prisoners in 1940. They shot them all dead, or ran them over, or did. And they, they wouldn't even pick the bodies up in 1940 in Finland. They said, "Let them lay there and let them rot." That's <laughs> they drove their cars over their frozen corpses uh, if they were shot in the street. <laughs> I mean, that was brutal. And I mean, that's the only language Soviets have ever spoken. So, but regardless of what I think or you mm -hmm. think or whoever thinks. Ukrainians have not, to my knowledge, been, you know, uh, out of control or anything like that. I mean, as far as I know, they're launching offensive operations within, you know, the normal guidelines of war. And, you know, they're defending mm -hmm. themselves when they're attacked. Yeah. So, and, and not with, like, unconventional weapons and they haven't used any uh, chemical weapons and things, you know, that I know of, you know, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, they have taken prisoners. They've negotiated fair exchanges. Um, yeah, you know, so as mm -hmm. far as I know, it's, it, as, as war goes, it's, uh, being conducted in a, in a proper way. Mm -hmm. I mean, that sounds stupid when you're talking about a war, but you know, I mean, I don't know what other terms to use, but, uh, you know, they they seem okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, I mean, I hope we don't let them down. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, the government's already going to run out of money, what, at like Thanksgiving or something, you know? Uh, so, yeah, yeah. 
to our government. So I, I mean, I don't, I, I don't understand what's happening here. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's just what, what's, what's the issue? I mean, if you disagree with the president on on things, then you disagree. You don't shut the government down. Then you negotiate. You give him a few things he wants. You get a few things you want, and you keep the government running. I mean. That, that's how it works you know there's no reason to you're just gonna shut it down i mean over and some of the things that it's over i mean it's just you, you know i mean it's like the tuberville thing i mean he's holding up basically military preparedness because he's unhappy that the military will pay for one of their service members to travel somewhere and receive an abortion if uh, they need one and they happen to live in a state that doesn't allow it right now. I mean, they'll just reimburse the travel expense. I mean, I mean that's okay. If you don't agree with that, again, fine. You're allowed mm -hmm. to have that opinion. But so you're gonna you're gonna shut down, you know, the entire upper echelon of the military over it. I mean, you, you're just you. I mean, when the rest of your people don't want to do it, it's just stupidity. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's 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 little wine ass is what yeah. it is. Now the question I have let's let's get back to this whole uh, Trump thing here in New York because it it's got me fascinated mainly because my judge the guy who was our judge in the uh, in the uh, uh, what do you call it trial the mm -hmm. uh, thing that we did on the rent and so on and so forth and and with our uh, landlords uh, that judge is is uh, the judge that's Got doing the Trump trial is our lawyer. In fact, that uh, that uh, that uh, what do you call it? That um, uh, assistant to the judge, the law clerk to the judge, uh, was our law clerk. You know, and he, that's the one that got uh, Donald Trump a ten thousand dollar fine. So I have a little interest in this because every time they show you know, uh, court drawings that are being made of the, of the trial. Uh, there, there's my judge, man. There's this judge, Arthur N. Gorin. Uh, and I'm not a bad guy either. I got to tell you that. I liked him. I liked him a lot. In the end, when he's your judge and you're doing the fighting back and forth, you, you, nobody's going to like the judge. Nobody's going to like the law clerk. Nobody's going to like anybody because everything's so contentious. But once you've settled, he then called us into his chambers. Chambers. I always thought judges' chambers had, you know, law books lining the nice. walls. You know, the big wooden debt. No, degree on the wall. <laughs> it was like an ante room or something. Where really? I'm surprised they didn't have a urinal in there. Okay, I mean, <laughs> uh, but he he called us in and and she was there too, and they just both congratulated us for having settled the whole case and how happy they were for us, and they you know they really liked us and. Uh, you, they felt we were good defendants in this case, and he was. They were just very nice, and so oh, that's my last remembrance of Judge Ngoran. And he may, I had, we may be going back to him to get some uh, things settled about our case that the uh, the uh, landlords are not living up to. But I mean, he, he. But he's also, and I found this out dealing with him, is a no nonsense judge. He wouldn't take crap from anybody. And that's exactly what's happening in the in the Trump thing. He's not taking this uh, sideshow that Trump is trying to put on, and he's not letting him get away with it either. And if Trump thinks this is going to help his case, forget it. It's not. You're setting yourself up to lose. And I think he has. You know, there are all these other cases against him, but I think this is the one that truly can bring him down. Because this is the one that shows the emperor has no clothes. You know, this shows that this guy isn't a billionaire, has been faking it for years, has been a fraudster for years, and uh, he has been perpetrating a fraud against not only the people of New York, but against, ge in general, the people of the United States who believe these lies he's been saying about himself all these years. D do you think Josh and everybody else here, that this case may bring him down worse than any of the others? I mean, the others well, might get him jail time, but... Yeah, I, I yeah. think personally it probably will because he's going to be forced to pay a lot of money that I just don't think he has. And he's going to lose all his LLCs in New York? 
Yeah, and and then the ability to make more and recoup it right. But if the judgment were to hold, for example, of two hundred fifty, two hundred sixty million dollars or whatever, I mean that has to be paid, you know, basically in cash. I mean, you know, or I mean a wire transfer. But you know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it that's you got to pay that in liquid money. And how fast do you have I to don't pay? Think he how, has the money. How fast? <laughs> how fast do you have to pay that money? You know, I really don't know. I I don't know. I'm not really sure about that. I, I'm, I'm sure they said it when the judgment comes out, you know, under some sort of thing. But and then there'll be appeals, um, you know, that he won't win, mm -hmm. uh, um, especially because, you know, it's it, their state appeals. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's not. So they, they won't be drawn out, I don't think, for years and years either. No, you go, but, to, you go to an appellate court. I found this out in my own case where the landlords have done this. You go to the appellate court. It usually comes back pretty fast. Yeah, so you know what what will end up happening is is if he doesn't have the money in cash, which mm -hmm. I, I would say that he doesn't, mm -hmm. they will just seize assets and sell them off. You know, to to reach the money. Hmm. And I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure they can seize assets outside of New York that are personally owned by him. I mean, I don't think the assets are seizing have to be in New York, uh, but you know, I'm not positive, but I don't think so. So, you know, they could take whatever assets they nope. need to to sell off. And, you know, some of the stuff that he owns, you know, bring a lot of money, but not, you know, for example, the golf course that he owns in New Jersey, I mean, I, I can't, if it were up for sale when he was getting fair market value, I mean, I, I can't imagine that it sells for more than, you know, $15 million or $20 million or something. I mean, how about you know, Trump Tower? How much is Trump Tower worth? That I, I don't know. And I mean, uh, you know, and I don't know how complicated But he, that if he is. can't be an LLC in New York City, isn't he going to have trouble maintaining that building as a yeah, business? Yeah, I don't know what will... The aftermath of it uh, is probably going to be ugly, too, because... He'll have to, he'll have to move Trump... He'll have, he'll have to move Trump Tower to New Jersey. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's... it's uh, you know, but I don't think he has money. I mean, you know, personally, I mean, most of his money was basically just, you know, assets and, and the belief that he had money. And I mean, that's why they got all these loans all the time. I mean, they were constantly getting loans to operate, you know, which isn't based, I don't think, ba based on lies. Well, that's part of what they're saying is the case. Well, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's, you know, it's. I mean, companies do take out loans, but he seemed to take a lot of them out, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, and they seem to be frequent, and he seemed to have to lie in order to get them, which is not good. I mean, companies do take out loans, but like I said, I, I, don't, I don't always think that it's good when they do, I mean, I work for a company that doesn't, t hasn't taken out any loans that I've been mm -hmm. able to figure out when I researched them. You know, they operate off their cash flow, you know? Mm -hmm. I think when a company, I mean, does that a lot, that's not good. I mean, one time for like a capital influx because they're going to build all these things or mm -hmm. I think that's one thing because there's a set time that they think they're going to recoup that investment. It's for an investment. But when a company does it just for you know, like I, we, there was an article a day or two ago that said, you know, the San Diego Padres, a baseball team, borrowed $50 million this year, uh, unbeknownst to anybody, so they could cover their payroll. Well, that's not good. They're overextended. I mean, mm -hmm. that's bad. I mean, you know, companies shouldn't have to borrow money mm -hmm. to meet regular expenses. Yeah. When they borrow money, it should be for a purpose. Well, yeah, I just think that this case, uh, which I, in the beginning, I think we all thought of as the pre-show, you know, is now turning out to be something maybe a little more serious than that, and that could be the undoing of Donald Trump. Yes, uh, Charlie? According to Forbes magazine, Trump Tower in New York is worth $371 million. Well, that's that pays. I would pay is two hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah, yeah. But that, that's if somebody buys it for that. Yeah. Price. But I think what people face when they get into these things is, 
um, he's not going to be in control of selling it. I don't think it'll probably yep. be sold by, you know, auction and and yep. everyone. I mean, you don't have to give that to him for him. You, right. the, it's going to sell for whatever the most person will pay for it is. But, I mean, are people going to line up for it? I mean, that seems like well, let, let's let's face not it. To get let, an investment back let's from. face it. What yeah. what this kind of guts Trump of is that his major influx of cash to his company was only his name. They put his name on a building, he would charge them to put a name on a building, you know. He would uh, try and sell stakes with his name. His name is what's sold. And now his name doesn't mean shit to a tree. You know, it has no cachet. Yeah, I mean, he does have a lot of small properties all over that are probably these, you know, like I said, you know, he's got a lot of golf courses that he could probably get seven or eight million dollars a piece from he's got a lot of wineries that are probably worth a million and a half two million dollars for the land where they're at and 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 things like that so you may lose a lot of assets you know I, I don't know and like i said i'm also not sure how but he but he's lost the main State thing works, he's you know, lo lost the main source of his income yeah and that's his name yeah, I mean, I'm well, sure he'll try to I, I, I have reform a, somewhere else, but yeah. We had a, some friends who had an apartment built uh, apartment in a building on the uh, on the west side of New York, and it was a Trump named building. Well, they went up and paid somebody to take the Trump sign down because it, this they had condos in this place, and if they wanted to sell those condos, it was lowering their property value. I mean, despite the fact that he was charging ex exorbitant prices and ripping the government off, I, I believe he lost that hotel that he had in Washington D.C. Right? He sure I mean, did. He did sold it. I mean, you know, or, I remember. Or it's up for sale. One or the other. Yeah, I remember yeah. seeing it a few times because when you visit D.C. on the Metro Line, the stop, uh, one of the stops you get off at is Federal Plaza, and when you come up to the top of Federal Plaza and you walk right out, you're looking right at that that hotel. So mm -hmm. I've walked by it many times. And I don't think he has it anymore, right? No. I think he. Well, yeah, well, I think it. either that or it's for sale, one or the other. But it's, yeah, it, I yes. thought it was sold. But Tony, I mean, yeah, didn't last long. Funny you mentioned Trump's name. My brother took me and my sister and my niece out to dinner in the village tonight, right? So Alex, we went to an Italian restaurant. I won't say the name, but I can message to you offline. So we said, let's see what the menu looks like before we go in. And right on the top of the menu, it says, Donald Trump said this was the worst place to eat. So one of the guys walks in and says, this has got the best food in the city. So it's almost like they had it right on the menu. Like, we, like they were so proud of it to say, we went in, it was excellent. <laughs> and I was laughing when I looked at the menu. Do you, do you think that was a joke on the part of the restaurant? Yeah, they were they were like proud that he said that. I was like, no, we no, eat no, here no. Now. But, but maybe he didn't say it. Maybe that was just a joke. I was going to ask you. I wonder if it's true, Alex. Well, I would eat because I can give you the name. Maybe you might know. I won't say it on the air. Well, no, tell me what the restaurant is. It was the Waverly. It the was Waverly. Like a, I think I know where that is. Yeah. Yeah, it's in a nice spot too. Because we went to pick yeah. up something for my niece, mm -hmm. and we didn't know where to eat. So my brother says, the lady says that Waverly is really a nice place if you want food. So we found it. And then we were looking at the menu. So we'll go in here and eat before we go home. Yeah, this, they have a good reputation. Yeah, I mean, and it was right on the top of the menu when we were looking at it. <laughs> I was laughing. <laughs> My brother's like, we're definitely eating here. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, all right. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's good. It was good. I liked it. I had bolognese. I loved it. I loved the sauce. Yeah. I was going to try to make it over the weekend. My sister got me like, we kind of like a recipe on the food now. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So I think I can make this. I can get nutmeg tomorrow. <laughs> But his uh, look, his ship is sinking, right? I mean, mm -hmm. and it and it's hard to salvage a sinking ship. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying it can't be done, but it is usually doesn't work out well. So, yeah, I mean, you know, and then I heard a few, you know, that his kids during their testimony, you know, got some attitudes and things. None of them helped themselves out, right? I mean, you know, we. We all knew that was coming, and you know, I mean, Ivanka didn't want to testify next week because her kids were in school. <laughs> so, you know, as I mean, it must be you know billionaire problems. You know, how do you find a babysitter? It must be a real. Challenge. Well, she was she was subpoenaed to <laughs> appear. Right, uh, right, because, right, but she asked for a delay because it was a school week for her kids. Because so this is this is, this, July, is what, I mean. this is the part of the trial 
yeah. that is the prosecutor's part of the trial. Yeah, right. And uh, it's wrapping up after they're through. So, yeah. I mean, if it wraps up before she, you know, and she can't go there, then they're not going to be able to, you know. Well, she's scheduled to testify, like, Tuesday or something, I believe. You yeah, know, I think it ends but, Wednesday, Josh. They were saying on the news. I was yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday, no, Monday, yeah. Monday and Tuesday is Donald. Okay. Oh, it is Donald? He's coming? Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna, that's going <laughs> that, 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 to yeah, that's that's be a comedy yeah, show. Apparently <laughs> asked for an extension a few <laughs> times. It was denied. You know? But her reasoning apparently was because it was a school week for her kids. So, I mean, you know, I, I mean, it's just. I can't help, uh, you know, as okay. I say, I know the judge. Okay. Uh -huh. And I can't help but think that this guy, that Judge Ngoran, Arthur Ngoran, uh, Justice Ngoran, uh, isn't having the time of his life. Well, I would, ima every I would time, imagine. Every really time you see him, him, there's a smile on his face, you know? <laughs> I mean, to begin yeah. with, this is the most publicity this guy's ever going to get in his life, okay? But it's also just his chance to lay it to somebody who's been so outrageous in New York City for years and has been scamming this city, you know? Licking your chops, taking your shots at him, right? Really. Huh? You gotta be like licking your chops, just digging your fork into him, really. Yeah, yeah. So, he's, like, you know, he just, he's gotta come and like... Yeah, so he's gotta be like, Oh boy! Oh, boy. <laughs> which one? He hit him with the left side. Suck! I just, just. He's well, just you know, if Trump wasn't acting up, if Trump just sat there, yeah, I mean, you know, but he get, he gets up and leaves because he's mad and he storms out of the, you know, he's making putting on a show, and and you just don't do this because a judge he's mocking doesn't. The, the, he, he's he, mocking the court system he, and everybody exactly, there. Like. You're mocking the, this the court. Yeah, yeah. You know, right. and he's acting like a mob boss is what he's really acting. Yeah, exactly, like. that's <laughs> well, it's like, he's worse than Gotti though, because Gotti made it very easy for himself to be <laughs> he's going prosecuted on. in yeah. these cases, and and in this case sued because, you know, the violations, legal or um, you know, civil and criminal that he commits are, he tends to go out of his way to make them obvious. You know, I'm. Just, yeah. Well, I, I don't the think... The criminal is not a very smart one because he doesn't really even... I mean, he's the guy who robs the bank and looks at the camera and makes sure he leaves the note with his fingerprints there when he leaves. You know, I mean, he's just not... Yeah, well, I mean, uh, uh, Tony was saying that, you know, he's like... <laughs> uh, he was uh, uh, like Gotti, and that's kind of an yeah, insult. That's, an, that's, an in, that's an insult to Gotti. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. He's yeah. right on the Grand Avenue, I told Jackie. By my complex house. about himself that he's, you know, yeah, I mean, right. You know, I mean, at least Gotti uh, took people out to lunch. I don't know, you know, I mean, Gotti, you, you know, all, all you knew about Gotti is he was a cold-blooded killer. Oh, yeah. That's but, boss, you know, Trump is happen. trying to kill democracy. So, exactly. you know, I yeah. mean, what's worse? Um, you know, it's a really... I used to laugh when the New Yorkers used to say... They used to show the news with Gotti and the old clips. I'm watching the old clips on YouTube. And they were, he used to throw like a party every year, like outside for the people. And they'd say, we love John Gotti. Yeah, you love him as long as he's not, as long as you're not muscling in any of his business. The guy's a killer, but they like revered this guy. Oh, yeah, they, uh, they were. Yeah, he was He was looked upon as a kind of folk hero of sorts. Yeah, like even me and Chuck used to talk about him, Alex. They loved this guy. Like I never understood the love affair. What is it a love affair with a mobster? You think Al Capone? Oh, like I think that? part of that has to do. It's cultural, and I think it has to do with the community that he lives in and that he protects. Okay. Because you go down there and you tell people, "What do you think of John Gotti?" And you say, "Well, I don't oh. know whether he's good or bad, but all I know is they're not robbing cars in my neighborhood." Yes, that's what they used to always you know, say. Yes, yeah, that wouldn't go by here when he was here. You wouldn't have any of that. Yeah, it yeah. was safer. They said, yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. So I mean, you know, that's that's why he was appreciated and, and I won't say liked is not the term really. <laughs> he said yeah. a dance. Yeah, that's kind of extreme. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, it, 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 he was. But there, by the way, in case you're interested, on Netflix, there's yeah, a three, it's a good. I didn't see it. Yet. Three part documentary on Gotti, and it's very. Very good. I'm gonna have to watch it. I know it's up there because yeah. it goes through that whole thing about him and the fact that people looked upon him kind of as a hero, you know. When he yeah. was on trial, there were, I remember the 80s, there were yeah. people outside saying, you know, free Gotti, you know. Yeah, Alex, he was laid out, Gotti, at the same way. Uh, funeral parlor was my mom, Papa Vero's. 
And when he was laid out, it's three blocks from my house, I close to Shecky. I'll never forget that day. I walked over there. You couldn't get near it because the news was there. They had all cops across the street. There was a line around the block just to get in to see this guy. And all the all you saw was the photographers and the cops taking photos of everybody going in and coming. Well, out. half of them that went to the funeral parlor went yeah. there to make sure he was dead. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> yeah. we, you got to still pay though. <laughs> you got to pay the thing. Yeah, yeah. I was wild over here. Yeah, but I mean, oh. it, it, it's just it, it and what it just in, is so insane to me is that yeah. the more this crap happens to him, the higher his ratings go. You, know? you think it's that high, Alex? I was going to ask you guys that. You think it's that? You, you really? I, I'm well, just curious. You know, it's it's going to be interesting because I think Josh would agree with me on this. There's a there's a large difference between people who say they're going to vote for uh, for Donald Trump and the people who will, in reality, not vote for Donald Trump. Uh, I, I don't think that these people necessarily will wind up voting for Donald Trump. I think when they get into that voting booth and they say, this guy's got so much baggage, you know, they're going to take that into consideration. But asked by a news person or a pollster, of course, you can say anything you want to say, you know. Yeah, I mean, we've certainly learned that that stuff is, you know, not as trustworthy as we had always believed or the media would have had us believe and there is still a long way to go i mean there's mm -hmm. you know a year right right I mean, he's got four trials or however many of them they can get started between now and then like we've talked about before where bad shit about him is going to come out day after day after day right and and you know and and there is this growing coalition of never again trump people you know, like the No Labels organization, who now swear that they are going to put into place their plans to ensure sure. that he doesn't get reelected by running people as a third party in very only in important states, running them as independents but as Republicans, to give Republicans in those states someone they can vote for who is not Trump, so that they don't feel like they have to vote for Biden because they won't. Mm -hmm. and they don't need these people to get much. They just need them to get a percent and a half or two or three percent of the vote in that state, and that will be enough to give that particular state to Biden. You know, so these folks are talking about running in Utah or, you know, mm -hmm. like Nevada, for example, or Utah, uh, Wisconsin. You know, they're talking about, you know, in Wisconsin running Paul Ryan for president. He's not going to get elected president. He's not really going to campaign for president. He's just going to allow his name to be put on the ballot in Wisconsin, and it's going to allow people like Patrick to roll in there and say, I'm not voting for Trump. I'm not voting for, for Biden. But, hey, look, I like Paul Ryan. He's on the ballot. I'm going to vote for him. And enough people do that. Uh, instead of it being 50-50, it's going to be, you know, Biden 48, Trump 46 and this guy 4% or what you know what I'm saying yeah, let so, me ask you though uh, you know? uh, what what do you think where the Biden campaign is concerned what do you th how do you think the RFK junior factor is going to well, play out I mean the data is showing that it hurts Trump worse than it hurts Biden really yes it's it's showing that the vast majority of the people that are claiming they would like to vote for RFK Jr. Uh, are people that were originally going to vote for Trump. Hmm, that's good news. Um, yes, that the, the, there are also people not objecting to him being on the ballot in certain states. Yeah. But, but I mean, that's their plan, is to go to some but, of these well, you places. know, one of the current fights going on right now is to get uh, Trump uh, delisted in, I think it's Colorado. Oh, in Colorado, I was reading Yeah, that. I mean, yeah. they're... They're going through their democratic process there, you know, at least. So, I mean, we only have a few sec minutes left here. But constitutionally, how does that stand? In other words, you're accusing Donald Trump of aiding and abetting a, uh, in a insurrection. And, yeah. and according to the 14th Amendment, I think Section 3 or something like that, yeah. uh, you're not al anybody who does that is not yeah. allowed to run for president. Yeah, I mean, I... But, right. but he hasn't been found guilty of that yet. Right. But that's also speaking to a federal level. 
you know, Colorado mm -hmm. is trying to basically just Im impose that within their own state on their own ballot, which they, I believe, would have a right to do. I mean, the states do run their own elections as long as they don't violate federal law. Mm -hmm. um, so it does get a little bit tricky, uh, you know, yeah. and it takes a lot of sorting out. But, you know, I mean, at least they are going through a democratic process on it, and it's not, you know, uh, just a, an executive order by a governor or something like that. Right. I, mean, I don't think anyone right. wants that. But, yeah, but, you know, like, like I said, there is this Lincoln Project, no labels, people teaming up and saying, you know, fine, let him be the nominee. And then we're gonna we're gonna find a way to make sure that he doesn't win. That he doesn't win. And yeah. we're gonna go to six or Boy, eight. Boy, did you ever think American win. politics would get this strange? Well, I honestly, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm never surprised because I've mm -hmm. read it all in a way. I mean, people have. <laughs> We've been really low before, come back, you know, I mean, but we are in a bad spot. I mean, there's, it's, it's, we're in a terrible spot. There's no doubt, you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I don't mind the disagreement. I just don't, I, I mind the nonsense that goes along with the disagreement now. Yeah. And we've had that. I mean, we've had it before I mean, we've had violence attached to it before. So, you know, um, but I, I, I think we should be past that by now. But we're not, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm. We're we're absolutely not. Yeah. We should be, but we're not. Charlene hasn't said anything tonight. She, Alex. Yes. I was gonna say I heard you say New Jersey three times tonight, so I popped in. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's our huh. official delegate from New Jersey, and let's look at Charlie's shirt tonight. My favorite oh. childhood memory is my back not hurting. I think that that's, uh, I would agree with that. Uh, only in me, my case would be my knee, okay? Oh, well, but, my you know. knee too. Oh, your knee too? Yeah. Uh, oh boy, we're, we're just a mess, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. But I happen to be 83 and I'm a mess. Uh, but I'm not that much of a mess. Marjorie's a mess. I mean, her knee, knee and everything's been killing her. You haven't lost any toes. I'm in a worse mess than you. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I was just quickly. I was going down the elevator and I, the big, giant, fat guy, the fattest guy you've ever seen in your life, got into the elevator. And as we got out of it, I looked over at Marjorie and I said, "We're going out to dinner." And I'm glad I didn't say to you, "Does this make me look fat?" <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let me uh, let me start the music here uh, and and. Uh, Say good night to all of you. Uh, thank you, Josh. Really appreciate it. Um, thank you, Alan. You were a little quiet tonight, but you know, joining. It was interesting listening. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, we like having you here. Okay. We love having Jeff here. Jeff never says anything, so you know. I mean, but we love having him here. Uh, uh, and and uh, Mike Wallace. Uh, <laughs> Charlie Wallace, thank you so much for joining us, and 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 Tony, yeah, you you were piping up a little bit tonight, and Char Charlene, go to sleep. It's getting late, okay. Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay. There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight, okay, and uh, they'll uh, well, they can be back again next week. Uh, there will be another citizens panel right after this as uh, Jack Bishop takes the helm of GabNet and uh, he'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'm Alex Bennett. I will be seeing you again on Monday for the pop-up show on, uh, on uh, um, Facebook and then again next Wednesday. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, Tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.